Hey everyone, welcome to Old Town Coleman. My name is Frank. Welcome to part two of a three-part series. This is how to clean a single mantle lantern. So let's cover what we, the parts we have in the box here and we'll talk about how we're going to clean them. For bare metal brass parts, and most, uh, many of your parts on a Coleman lantern are brass. Stick All them to a magnet. Brass parts can get cleaned in either lime away, I'm sorry, either vinegar or navel jelly. It doesn't matter which one you use, except for a few parts. The valve body you would not want to do in vinegar, because if you soak this, you're going to get vinegar up inside of here, and there is a stem packing around there. You don't want to soak that stem packing in vinegar. This is a real good candidate for navel jelly. The fuel and air tube is hollow, so you are not able to get navel jelly up inside of there. So this thing you would definitely want to soak in vinegar. So those are all the brass parts. I'm going to split these in half. You can see that the burner tube and the U-tube are about the same color. So I'll soak one in vinegar and I'll soak one with navel jelly. And you can see the difference when they come out. Aluminum. I'm going to soak this in vinegar for a little while. And then I'm just going to take a, ra a rag and wipe all this stuff off. These usually come real clean. Small metal parts like that on my pump or my pal nut for the frame. Parts like this I'm just going to spray with carburetor cleaner and then hit them with a wire brush. This part has rust on it and if it has rust on it I recommend you use navel jelly because that's what navel jelly does. It removes rust. This frame um, it's in good shape, but it is definitely dirty and sooty and rusty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to completely coat this thing with navel jelly and let her sit for a while, and it should clean up pretty well. Things like the bale, uh, it's got rust on the ends where it was inside of the frame. I'm going to hit that with navel jelly for a little bit, and then I'm going to take some 4 out steel wool, and I'll just clean the edges on it, and the bale will come out looking really clean. Let's talk about some parts that need just uh, some simple green to them. The fount, filler cap, filler cap screw, the valve wheel, and the direction disc. These parts you just hit with some simple green. Well, this is the second coat actually you're getting today. You just want to let them soak. Set them over here. This stuff works wonders, and it can just sit there and do its thing. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to separate some of these brass parts. I'll clean some of them in vinegar. I'll clean some of them with navel jelly, and then we'll check back on those, and then I'll get busy on a few of these other parts that I can start cleaning now. Okay, so I have poured some white vinegar into this old Cool Whip container, and you can see I have a vinegar soak started. Vinegar, you give it an hour or so. Uh, but you have to pay attention to what you put into there because if you put something nickel plated in for an hour you might uh, end up damaging it. So just pay attention to what you have in your vinegar and we will just set this aside for now and let it soak. Next thing I'm going to do is coat these parts with navel jelly and you can see I got my nice pretty pink navel jelly. You can see how goopy it is. Really cool stuff. I'm wearing gloves, of course. And then once I get these things coated, I will just put these in the container. And these usually take uh, about half the time of vinegar, 30 minutes or so. And these will be pretty clean. Okay, now 
on the frame. And this is one of the benefits of have something nice and sticky because you can get it to all your horizontal and vertical surfaces and it doesn't really matter. It will stick to it and stay there until you wash it off. Okay, there is our navel jelly bath. Now, the rest of the parts I have in there are going to get cleaned with carburetor cleaner and a metal brush. I'm going to hit my fountain again one more time. All these pieces over here with simple green, let it stay nice and wet. What I'm going to do is just spray this real quick with carburetor cleaner. Okay. Okay, I'm going to spray some of that in there. Just want to get this nice and clean because again, this is what goes around your uh, pump housing. And the cleaner it is, the easier it will be for you to reassemble it. Okay. So I think we got this looking pretty good. So now we have a clean pump and pump cap. Going to reinstall it. I will put my spring on that I didn't really even need to clean. The next thing I will put on is my backing plate. And I didn't have to clean it either. It was nice and clean. If you can see, it has a flat side, then it has a side with a raised inside edge. That raised inside edge is for the pump cup. So I'm going to set it in like this. Cinch her down real well. Now we can put our pump cup on. And then the nut will go on there. I'm just going to snug this up real quick. Okay, so there's the pump. It is clean, ready to go back into the lantern. Only the last thing we need to do is get the pump cup itself uh, soaking in some Neats foot oil. A little jar of it here. So, what you try to do is try to get it to fold back like an umbrella and just set it down in there like that. The next thing I'm going to do is prepare the filler cap insert for a new gasket. Uh, the way we do that is we take a propane torch and we burn out the old gasket and once it's cool we can scrape it out of there and we just roll a new gasket in it. So taking my propane torch here. I have it sitting on a fire brick. Uh, this came out of a stove that I, I replaced the brick from. So it's not going to ignite or anything. But I'm just going to set it on there like this. Let her get nice and hot. Start to see it curling out of that thing like a snake. The insert itself is brass, so don't worry about destroying it. But you want to get that gasket nice and uncomfortable so it comes out real easy. Okay. Now we're going to let this set for a few minutes and we'll dip it in water, cool it off, and then we'll scrape the old gasket out and put in a new gasket. What we'll do now is take a small screwdriver and a dental pick and I'm going to get the old gasket out of there. Use a dental pick to go around the outside edge just to make sure that there's nothing in there. <laughs> okay, there's our new insert, gas, or the insert, it's prepared for a gasket. This is what a proper fuel filler insert gasket looks like. I have seen on eBay somebody selling O-rings to be used as insert gaskets. An O-ring is not a gasket. An O-ring is an O-ring. This needs to be flat so it sits properly inside of this insert and also rests properly on the filler 
inlet hole. So these fit in here just perfectly. So I just set it in there like that. And it will now seal perfectly. And it is ready to go back on a clean lantern. So while I'm waiting for the navel jelly to work and the vinegar to work and the pump cup to fill up with oil, I'm going to do, start doing a little bit of work on the outside of the fount. So I'm going to take a so nice soft brush and I'm going to start working on the uh, area around the pump housing. And this looks really, really thick stuff. It was, but as you can see, after soaking for 20 minutes with Simple Green, it's coming right off. Now when you do this, don't forget that you have paint and a lot of grease and everything else inside of the hole too. So what you would want to do is take a toothbrush and spray down in there and clean it too. We're going to submerge this in water later, so all this will come out. I think we can live with that. This is an old rifle bore brush, and I'm going to clean the inside of the hole a little bit too. Looks like it's got a little bit of rust there. We determined yesterday we had a little bit of rust inside. This amount of rust, I'm sure you can hear, is it's obviously not a lot. And all I'm going to do is pour it out, shake it out, and blow it out with an air compressor, and we should be fine. If it was an older lantern, or there was a lot of crud in there, and you could hear it, or you could smell it if it, it smelled varnish, um, what you could do is put some BBs down in there or some small uh, nuts or screws. Just pour a whole bunch in there and then shake it around and that will bust out all the rust and stuff. If you've never had the opportunity to look inside of a fount, um, this I have here is from a 1966 220. And when I took the filler cap off, I realized how nasty this thing was inside. So I decided to cut it apart and look. And that's <laughs> that's what she looks like. That's the bottom of the pump cylinder, obviously, and that's where your check valve sits. The other end of your check valve is this little in air inlet tube. And this can get clogged, but usually all the problems down there. But uh, what I'm showing you here is just how nasty this particular fount got inside. So now let's get on to these. Um, I'm going to clean the grease out of the grooves on this. Uh, we will hit this with some rubbing compound and car wax later to make it look nicer. But I just want to get this the heavy grease off of it. The valve wheel almost always has a bunch of grease on the back side of it. And also has this lip which fits the uh, direction disc inside. That will also get a lot of grease inside. So just Take your time and, and clean that off real well. Okay, there's your valve wheel and she's clean. Next thing is the direction disc. Um, this has lettering on it and if, you're, if you get real aggressive cleaning this thing, the lettering will come right off. So what I usually do is I'll just set it in my hand, make sure it's nice and wet with simple green, and I'll just rub it like this. Rub it with my fingers very, very gently. They usually come nice and clean, but if you take a rag and start rubbing on it hard, it, it will take the lettering right off, so be careful. Okay, we've, we've had about 15-20 minutes inside the vinegar. Let's see what the, the frame rest is going to look like. Most of the stuff's loosened up real nicely. Someone scratched this up pretty well. So it should get better. We'll put her, put her back in and give her a few more minutes to soak and then we'll 
I'm going to pay a little more attention to cleaning it. Okay, what I'm going to do now is blow out the fount. Uh, as we heard earlier, there's a little bit, of, a little bit of dirt inside of here. So I'm going to turn it upside down, and I'm going to blow. So now I'm going to go over to the sink, and I'm going to rinse this out a few times. I'm going to continue to rinse it out until when I pour the water out, it is absolutely clear, so I know there's no rust in it. have washed the inside clean and I poured water out of it and it was absolutely clear. I looked inside, it looks nice and clean in there. I filled it full of alcohol and washed it out and blown it out and I'm letting it air dry now so the rust Ew. won't come back. Take some rubbing compound and I like to put some simple green in it. It makes it smooth or makes it a little easier to spread. And then simple green again to make it come off. Okay, once the rubbing compound dries on here, makes it real easy to pull off, just spray it again with some simple green. She wipes real clean, real quick. Not too bad. Make sure you clean the bottom of it too. So there's step one. Step two is just wax, car wax. Really make her look pretty. A note on the decal, um, you can rub the lettering of some decals right off, so when you are hitting it with the rubbing compound, uh, be careful. <laughs> you don't end up with a white, a white decal that says nothing. Okay, now the wax is dry. Take it off. Now one thing about these old lanterns, this one's not quite as old as I am, but it's in better shape than me, that's for sure. There's nothing wrong with a few bumps and bruises. This is not the most valuable lantern in the world, but it's not in bad condition, and it's still kind of pretty. Take a, make sure I get all the wax out of this little crease around the pump housing. So there's what she looks like now. Good looking lantern. A few scratches, but that's okay. So that's how you treat a painted fount, just like you would a car. We can set that aside. She's ready to be put back to use. So let's take out this old guy and see what we can do to it. The dirt on it and the little bit of haze, generally speaking, that can be cleaned off pretty easily with vinegar. If it is real thick or if it has a, a definite texture to it, almost like a fine sandpaper, uh, that probably means the nickel has been damaged and you would want to hit that with lime away. Let's get a clean rag here. I just like to use a rag like this. You buy these by the hundred at Home Depot. Um, they're just abrasive enough to use as a, a good cleaning rag. I'm dipping it in vinegar right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this part right here and I'm just going to start rubbing on it and see how, see how clean we can get it. Again, if you leave any acid on nickel too long, it will eat it, or damage it at least. Um, so you want to be very careful when you're doing this. So if I take a little bit of this Brasso stuff and put it on there and 
We'll rub this in for a few minutes. And you can see it looks quite a bit better. Not perfect. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's an old, old, old uh, lantern. It's been about an hour since I put my uh, brass parts into the vinegar bath, and I'm going to pull them out now and check on them. Wow. I'm not sure. Now, for instance, you'll notice on this, the burner cap, I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but it's got kind of a pinkish hue to it. That's, that's a, a consequence of using vinegar. But you hit this with steel wool when you're done in a little bit of WD-40 or something like that, and it comes out looking really good. Get that out of the way. Okay, that's what she looks like. About a 45 minute soak in just white vinegar. Let's pull out something else and see how it looks. Let's pull out the fuel and air tube. This is uh, easily bent, so be careful when you clean this. Okay, somewhere here I have a small piece of steel wool. Okay, you don't want to bend this rod. Be very careful with fuel and air tube. Okay, here are all my bare metal parts that I've cleaned with vinegar. They are all nice and clean. We still have to clean this. Okay. Got a little bit of scuffing on this side. A little bit of pitting. And there's nothing we can do about that. So that piece is ready. Now we can get into our navel jelly. The YouTube. It is still goopy. Okay. So that's what the YouTube looks like coming out. Remember these two pieces were black, about the same black. And you can notice the little bit of a pink hue on the uh, burner cap. That's from the vinegar. They'll both work. Okay, that's what our valve body looks like now. Again, this is a part that you don't want to submerge in vinegar. So, using navel jelly on this is a good thing. Vent hanger. We had quite a bit of rust on it before. If you have really heavy rust, you may have to let this set overnight. It doesn't appear this is that bad, but there are some pieces that you would want to. Okay, now, good way to clean uh, Clean a bale, so steel wool. Looks a lot better. Still got a little bit of dark on it, but that looks a heck of a lot better than it did. Okay, now we get to the frame. Always the hardest part of a lantern to clean is the frame, unless you're going to bead blast it, then it's real easy. We're going to clean this thing off, see what it looks like, and if we need to, we'll We'll touch it up with some more navel jelly and let it sick some more. Okay, last time you saw me, I was scrubbing on this frame, and unfortunately the camera died. So I had to clean it up last night and, and finish it. And here she is. It looks pretty good. Uh, I, I wanted to let you know that around the bottom of it, it is going to be next to the frame rest which is real pretty aluminum so if you take some 4 out steel wool and just hit this around here and then this area around the edge of the frame uh, it'd make it shine and look really nice but she's ready to go the steel parts up here got a light coat of oil on them and now we have a lantern in a box that is all clean 
and we are ready for reassembly. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to our channel. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter. Instructions on how to do this rebuild can be found at oldtowncoleman.com under the Learning Center. Thank you again, and until next time, keep them burning.